In this lecture, we want to relate the Galois group with ramification. So let A be a Dedekind domain with field of fractions k. And A is a Dedekind domain, so therefore it is integrally closed. So we are going to talk about integral closure of A, but now it will be in some uh, extension. So B be the integral closure of A in a finite separable extension L over k. So say you have this prime ideal P in A and this factorizes like this and we have talked about this before Fi is a degree of extension P quotient out with capital P i uh, over A over P. So our big theorem was that M is equal to degree of extension of L over K then this summation E i F i is M uh, where this E i comes from this factorization here and F i is right here. So what we want to prove is this. So if L over K is Galois, then all these EIs are E and FI is F for all I. And therefore, um, you have just EF here added R times, so you get EFR as M. So this translates right here. So this is what we want to show. So for this, we have to use the Galois group. So let Sigma be the permutation in the Galois group. And you can apply the sigma to the uh, monic polynomial of integral dependence over A of an element in B. So then you will get another element uh, sigma applied to whatever element you apply to whatever element we had here whose integral dependence we had the equation you apply sigma to it you get another element which is integral over A. So once you apply sigma to that that will lie in B. So what we are trying to say is that the B is stable under the Galois action. So uh, once you have an equation of integral dependence for an element, then you can apply all the elements of uh, sigma to it from our Galois group and you will keep on getting equations of integral dependence. So applying sigma to the element ma basically makes sure that the sigma would also lie in integral closure. So sigma B is B for all sigma in Galois group. So B is stable under the uh, Galois group. So this is what we are trying to say. So you take this uh, prime ideal capital P in B and this uh, when it contracts back to A, you get this small p. So now B is stable under the action of Galois group. So you can apply sigma to this relationship and you get this. So instead of P, you can apply sigma P. So this essentially means that sigma p lies in the factorization of this prime ideal p. So if this capital P lies in the factorization of p, then sigma p would lie in the factorization of p again. So this p here, if uh, this small p you're factorizing it, if capital P lies here, then sigma p would also lie in the factorization. So this is what we are trying to say here. And that is precisely because B is stable under the action of the Galois group. So this, uh, this will be carried over to sigma P. So these ideals P and sigma P are called conjugate prime ideals of B. And since they are conjugate, uh, you will have this E. If P has power E, uh, that so this, this E and E P over P is same as the power for sigma P over P. So that essentially means that, so if this P has power E, then the sigma P will also have power P. Similarly, this F would be the same here. So B, you modulo out P I or B modulo out sigma P I, you will get the same F. So degree of extension which would also be the same. So again, this is coming from the fact that B is stable under the Galois action. Sigma B is B. So this result leads to this result and this is what is causing the uh, causing these things. So uh, yeah so if you have P here then Sigma P would also divide this small p. So if this holds for um, this holds then we can easily find this result if all prime ideals are conjugate to each other because if all of them are conjugate to each other then all of them will have the same E's and all of them will have the same F's and we are done. So we want to show that the maximal prime ideals P i in B which appear in the factorization of sigma P so all these prime ideals are conjugate to each other therefore all of them have same E's and F's. 
so they are all conjugate so in other words we want to show that the galois group acts transitively so proof will be by contradiction so suppose this capital p this divides p so this capital p lies in the factorization of p it lies somewhere here and you have another uh, prime ideal q which also lies in the factorization of p but q is not uh, a conjugate of p for all sigma in the galois group so you can apply all sigmas to it but you do not get q so if we do this we will reach a contradiction so by chinese remainder theorem first we find an element x which lies in q but x does not lie in uh, sigma of p for all sigma in the galois group so first thing is that using chinese remainder theorem pick an element x in this prime ideal q but it does not lie in any of these uh, sigma p's so now you consider norm of x so norm of x would be like this so this is just from the definition of the norm so the sigma x lies in b for all sigma in the galois group so in particular you know that uh, one of the sigmas is just the id and therefore norm of x would lie within q so this norm of x lies within our prime ideal q now norm of x would also lie within a because a is a dedekind domain and therefore it is integrally closed so this norm of x would lie in a so norm of x lies in q because the sigma x lies in b uh, for all sigma and uh, you know in particular id map is there so this norm of x would lie in q so you get norm of x lies within q intersection a which is equal to p so this q intersection a equals to p we are taking from here so that as we said in the previous lecture in the lemma that essentially means that q lies in the factorization of this small p so but x is not in sigma inverse of p or you can say sigma x does not lie in p for any of the sigma in the galois group so sigma x does not lie in p this is because we have precisely chosen x so that it does not lie in sigma of p so this uh, we are reinterpreting it like this here now since p is prime and none of the x's lie here so you get norm of x does not lie in p because it's just multiplication of sigma x none of these sigmas lie within p so norm of x would not lie within uh, this capital p but this will contradict that norm of x actually lies within p and this is true because from here we are saying norm of x lies within small p norm of x lies within small p but the small p is equal to this because this capital p lies in the factorization of um, the small p so here we are saying norm of x is not in p but we know norm of x is in small p which is equal to capital p intersection a from here so this is the contradiction not p and in p so therefore uh, it has to be the case that all the prime ideals appearing are conjugates of each other and that gives us this result